Hi everybody, thank you for tuning into this presentation. My name is Carolyn Chatterton, and I am a third year OBGYN resident at Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center in West Islip, New York. Today I will be sharing my presentation titled, Diagnostic Accuracy of Fetal Growth Charts in Predicting Fetal Growth Restriction in the Third Trimester. In order to facilitate communication between obstetricians, neonatologists, and other clinicians, clear terminology needs to be established. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG, has published the following definitions. Fetal growth restriction is also known as intrauterine growth restriction, or IUGR. It is an antenatal diagnosis in which the estimated fetal weight is less than the 10th percentile for gestational age. Small for gestational age, on the other hand, is a diagnosis of the neonate as opposed to the fetus. It refers to infants found to be less than the 10th percentile for their gestational age. We care about fetal growth restriction because it is associated with subsequent poor outcomes, including possible intrauterine or neonatal death. The chart on this slide demonstrates the inverse correlation between fetal weight and perinatal mortality. A fetus found to have an estimated weight less than the 10th percentile has a 1.5% risk for intrauterine fetal demise, and a fetus with an estimated weight less than the 5th percentile is found to have a 2.5% risk for fetal demise. As you can see, there's a sharp increase in the rate of perinatal mortality once a fetus is found to have an estimated weight less than the 5th percentile. Fetal growth restriction is also associated with increased risk for medically indicated premature delivery and neonatal disease. Furthermore, According to the fetal origin of disease hypothesis, fetal growth restriction is thought to be the origin for several chronic childhood and adult conditions. Fetal growth restriction is screened for using bundle height measurements during routine prenatal care visits. It is then diagnosed using ultrasound biometry applied to one of several growth charts available, including those based on the Hadlock formula, Intergrowth 21, and the National Institute for Child Health and Human Development. I will be discussing further details regarding each of these growth charts subsequently in the presentation. Once a diagnosis of FGR is obtained, Ultrasound follow-up includes umbilical artery dopplers and growth sonograms every two weeks. The Hadlock formula is the most widely used formula for calculating fetal weight in the United States, and it is used in our institution for estimating fetal weight. Fetal growth is estimated based on measurements of the biparietal diameter, head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length. The mathematic equation is listed on the slide. The Hadlock formula was established in the 1970s based on pregnancy data from white women. No other race or ethnicity data was included. This is a picture of the fetal growth chart developed per the Hadlock formula, which is also the chart available in most ultrasound software today. Another method used to estimate fetal weight was developed by a project completed at the National Institute for Child Health and Human Development, or the NICHD. Data was gathered from 12 locations around the United States, and estimated fetal weight was calculated according to a modified version of the Hadlock formula. This formula incorporated only head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length. Biparietal diameter was not included. A fetal growth chart according to race and ethnicity was subsequently developed. This chart demonstrates the variations of fetal weight according to race and ethnicity as per the NICHD study. It was found that there is a statistically significant difference in fetal growth according to race and ethnicity. The final fetal growth chart that will be discussed in this presentation is that derived from a project completed with the International 
Fetal and Newborn Growth Consortium for the 21st Century, also known as Intergrowth 21st. This project is a global, multi-center, multi-ethnic, population-based study which took place from 2009 to 2014. Based on the results, a new fetal growth chart was developed. The formula for this growth chart is listed on the slide. Only head circumference and abdominal circumference are considered. This chart demonstrates the established 50th percentile for fetal weight per gestational age according to race and ethnicity established by the NICHD as compared to that derived from the Intergrowth 21st formula. As you can see, there's quite a bit of variation, especially as the gestational age increases. The incidence of fetal growth restriction is approximately 3-7% to of singleton gestations. However, this reported incidence is dependent upon many factors, including which definition for FGR is applied and the growth chart that is used. The ACAG definition for fetal growth restriction does not take into consideration the individualized growth velocity for each fetus. This presents an interesting clinical challenge. We must identify the patients with a pathologic basis for altered growth, a group distinct from those which are constitutionally small. By appropriately identifying a fetus with fetal growth restriction, appropriate risk modifications and interventions can be undertaken. Each of the growth charts discussed seeks to address this clinical challenge. Given the several options of growth charts, the purpose of this study is to determine and compare the accuracy of various fetal growth charts in identifying fetal growth restriction and predicting small for gestational age infants. This is a retrospective chart review. Patients included in the study were found to have an estimated fetal weight per the Hadlock formula less than the 20th percentile for gestational age within 14 days of delivery. The ultrasound must have been performed at our institution, and patients must have delivered at our institution between May 2018 and 2019. Patients with multiple gestations or with known fetal anomalies or aneuploidies were excluded from the cohort. Guidelines for gestational age dating by ACOG Committee Opinion 700 were followed. Maternal characteristics, pregnancy outcomes, and neonatal data were extracted. Hadlock formula was compared to Intergrowth 21st and NICHD growth charts for diagnostic accuracy. And the ultrasound estimated fetal weights based on the Hadlock formula were also compared to neonatal birth weights based on the World Health Organization neonatal growth charts. All ultrasound measurements were performed at a single institution by 10 registered sonographers and supervised by the maternal fetal medicine attending physicians. All measurements were performed using the same probe and ultrasound machines as listed. The statistical analysis for this project is as follows. Categorical variables were analyzed by chi-squared tests and continuous variables by t-tests. Sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, positive likelihood ratio, negative likelihood ratio, and areas under receiver operating characteristics curves were compared. 186 patients were included in this study. The mean maternal age at time of delivery was 29.3 years. Race and ethnicity data was not documented for 18 patients. However, for the remaining patients, non-Hispanic white women comprised of the majority at 44.1% of patients. Hispanic women comprised of 29.6% of patients, non-Hispanic black 14%, and Asian women 6%. 56.5% of patients were nulliparous. The average maternal BMI at the time of delivery was 30.3 milligrams per kilogram squared. All patients in this study had a documented estimated fetal weight determined by the Hadlock formula. When this data was analyzed and compared to neonatal birth weights, 79.4% of patients were found accurately to have a small for gestational age infant that was detected prenatally as being fetal growth restricted. This reflects true positives or sensitivity. Infants predicted to be appropriate for gestational age were identified correctly in 66.1% of cases. This reflects true negatives or specificity. The false negative rate was 20.6% of neonates 
and the false positive rate was 33.9% of patients. This slide demonstrates the receiver operating characteristics curve for each growth chart. The green dot represents the NICHD growth curve with the highest sensitivity. The intergrowth 21st growth chart is represented by the orange dot with the highest specificity. The Hadlock growth chart represented by the blue dot is somewhere in the middle. When the Hadlock formula is compared to the NICHD growth chart and the intergrowth 21st growth chart, it was found that the NICHD growth chart has the highest sensitivity at 92% and also the highest negative predictive value at 84%. The intergrowth 21st chart has the highest specificity at 46%. There is variation in the diagnostic accuracy among fetal growth charts in predicting small for gestational age. The NICHD growth chart has the best sensitivity and negative predictive value for predicting small for gestational age. The high performance of this growth chart can be attributed to the inclusion of race and ethnicity in its calculation. This chart may better represent a diverse patient population in clinical settings. Ultimately, further study is warranted to determine the impact on clinical practice based on this finding. The references for this study are listed below. For their help in developing this study, I would like to thank Dr. Gurham, Dr. Vulo, Dr. Sampino, Dr. Eason, and Dr. Tisser. Thank you for your thoughtful participation in this presentation.